Hello there, this is Melissa McClary and I'd like to welcome you to the Clarion Food Library short video tutorial called Just Google It. I'm the Young Adult Services Librarian and today I'll be taking you through some of the basics of searching with Google, including how to form a search, how to use some of the Google features, and how to find the right results for you. If you're watching this video, you're already using the internet, so you've already got the basics down. Excellent. We're just going over another piece of the internet today. Now, when you open an internet browser, such as Internet Explorer or Firefox, what comes up first is the home page. It may not right away be Google, so all you have to do is go up to the address bar or URL bar and type in google.com. And we'll be going over how to do that in just a bit here. Don't worry, but if you don't see Google right away, you can certainly get to it with no trouble. So, Google is a search engine, but what is a search engine and how is it different from the internet? Uh, a lot of people ask this question, so I want to go over that first. Uh, an internet browser allows you to access the internet or the web. You can, uh, from, from an internet browser, you can pretty much access almost anything, including your email account, various websites like um, CNN.com, and most importantly for this class, uh, search engines. On the other side here, we have actual search engines such as Google and Bing and Yahoo. These are just a sampling and there are a lot more out there. But a search engine is really just as the name suggests. This allows you to sift through the hundreds of millions of web pages and websites available on the internet. Uh, you use keywords that you choose and type into the search or query bar. Google is one of many, like I've mentioned, but it's certainly the most widely used. So, we'll go over how to use it and starting with some search terminology. I've been saying a few things here like keywords and query and I want to make sure you understand those before we get going uh, and start searching on our own. We have keywords, quotation marks, stop words, and query are all things we're going to be going over here in the next minute. So. Keywords. These are words or phrases relevant to your search topic. When you type keywords into a search engine, it locates web pages that contain those keywords. Essentially, the keyword acts like one piece of a puzzle. The search engine then finds all the other puzzle pieces that match those chosen keywords. Uh, examples of keywords can be things such as recipe or movie. If you type recipe into Google, for example, you get thousands of web pages dedicated to recipes. You can use more than one keyword, of course, which will help you narrow down your results, but it's important to choose the right one or the right ones, and we'll learn more about this as we go. Another term is quotation marks. Uh, quotation marks tell Google that you're looking for an exact phrase. If you want only web pages that contain the phrase sock monkey, for example, and not web pages that contain the word sock or the word monkey separately, you would use quotation marks so you ensure you get just what you want. Another word is uh, stop words, and these are words that are filtered out almost automatically by a search engine. Search engines can vary in what they consider a stop word, and you actually don't really need to worry about these since it does it automatically. I've got some examples listed here of a or for or very. These are just very common words that if a search engine were to look for it and to bring up all the web pages that contain that word, it would simply be too much for it to look for and it would really slow down your search and make it less efficient. So as you see just below Google there, it says stop words and then another blank and words. It's filtered out automatically all the things covered up in the little black bars. So stop words are words that some search engines ignore. And you can just ignore them in cre the creation of your search. It's okay. This is just an introduction as to how search engines work, which when you're forming your query, you can automatically do this and this will make everything more efficient for you. Uh, so a query is not a question. A question is something you ask using regular language just talking to people. When you're talking to a search engine, you need to use a different sort of language. A query is a series of keywords that you present to the search engine that describe your topic. 
For instance, a question is, how do you sew a button? That's something you could ask a friend or anything like that. If you want to ask a search engine, you cut out all the soft words, all the little fluff that you don't need, and you're left with a query, just sew button. And that's much more efficient and is going to help with your searching a lot. So we've gone over a little terminology. Now it's time to put it into use. So we're going to try searching in just a minute here. I just want to show you. My references, if you're curious as to where I got this information or where you can learn more, I just have three quick references down here. And there's a whole lot more to explore. You can use these little websites, or after we're done with this, you can practice Googling. So we're going to go into an internet browser now. Here we have my desktop background, and yours may look completely different. It may have a different uh, image on the background. It may have different icons, uh, but that's okay. Everyone's computer is going to function basically the same way. So to open an internet browser, I have some options here. I have Mozilla Firefox, Internet Explorer, and Google Chrome. Those are three really popular ones. My favorite just happens to be Mozilla Firefox. When you're using a search engine, it doesn't matter which one you open. Anything will work just fine. Now when I open this, this is my homepage, google.com, because I use it so often. However, if your homepage is different, all you have to do is click up in the URL bar here, and then just type google.com. Oftentimes it'll do a little autofill here, and that's okay. You can either hit the arrow to say, yes, I would like to go to google.com, or hit the enter button, and it'll just load up google.com for you there. So we're going to practice here. Already my cursor is blinking in the query bar, so I can just start typing. So I mentioned recipes earlier, and I'll just start typing recipe. So recipe, chocolate chip, and as I type, it starts to do a little autofill here. I've searched for recipes for chocolate chip cookies before, so it's highlighted that in purple here. And you can either click on that or finish up your search. It'll also guess as to other things you would want, such as coconut oil, shortening, other things that people have searched for, or other popular web pages that contain keywords like this. So I'll just finish it up. You can either hit enter or the blue search icon when you're all done. This did start bringing up results already because Google is very fast in processing. It brought so many results in less than half a second here, as you can tell. This is really just something, a uh, fun fact for you, really. You don't have to worry about how fast your search is. But here we go. We have a lot of search results here. And as we scroll, we can see they're all good recipes for uh, chocolate chip cookies. There will sometimes be little pop-out boxes such as this, separated by these thin, thin, uh, very light lines, which is news. And that's another feature we'll also go over a little later. But as you scroll, you can see all of these are relevant to our search. If I were to go back up here, I just want to show you a little exercise with stock words. If I were to add recipes for chocolate chip cookies, you can see our results stay pretty much the same. And all of these, they may be in a different order. It moved news down a little bit, but everything stayed the same because Google automatically filtered out the four here, and that's excellent. So if you were to type in other things, such as an actual question instead of a query, what are some recipes for chocolate chip cookies? And this has come up automatically because I've done this before. So if I click that, we see we get some less relevant results. Um, some of these may not be stop words. Ah, some is not a stop word, so it automatically searches for that. And that's okay, but it's weeded out some of the other re uh, recipes we came up with, such as Betty Crocker is no longer on here. So just keep that in mind, using a query such as recipes, chocolate chip cookies, can be much more efficient. Um, for more important searches, you'll see how this affects your results even more. So recipes is fairly low key, as long as it's got uh, chocolate chips, maybe some oatmeal and sugar in there, you're going to get a good recipe. But that's just something to keep in mind. 
All right, so I'm going to go over how to evaluate these results as well because you want to know what link should I click on or what should I avoid, anything like that. So I'm just going to hit the search. I do want to search for recipes, chocolate chip cookies. And this here, just so you know, is the results page. Each of these is a single result. So we've got uh, best chocolate chip cookies recipe, allrecipes.com. This is our first result here. And a little fun fact about the results, each of them includes some basic anatomy you could say. Up here we have the title which is just the title of the web page that you'll go to and here we have the URL so if you're curious about where it's going to take you it can offer you a little more information such as down here the URL lets you know this is a Martha Stewart website so that may be good for you to look at as well. Another thing in the black and gray text here, we have the snippet, which is just a little preview of that website. It'll highlight or bold the words that were in your search query. So we have chocolate chip cookies down here and recipe down here. And everything else you can just read a little bit and see what it's going to say. Uh, another part, sometimes you'll get ads over on the right side or possibly up at the top. You can certainly click on those, but keep in mind that they're just paid advertisements, so you can ignore them altogether if you would like. Other features of a results page include search results related to. So search results related to recipes, chocolate chip cookies include recipes, peanut butter, chocolate chip cookies, homemade, soft, chewy, and it just gives you, like the autofill up top, some idea of what other people may be searching for or some ideas to widen or narrow your search. So if you think, oh yes, recipes for peanut butter chocolate chip cookies are much better, you can click on that and it will show you to a new results page here. And these little features, they're featured throughout the website. So here we have even more search results related to recipes, peanut butter, chocolate chip cookies. And you can just keep going like that. Or, of course, you can select a recipe and see what happens. We also have some search tools here. These will change with every search. For instance, because we're looking for recipes, we have ingredients that we can uh, cut down, such as we don't have any eggs. We can eliminate that. And we've also got cook time, calories, anytime, things like that. If you want to select a search tool, all you have to do is open the menu by clicking on it and then select such as less than 30 minutes. If you've got less than 30 minutes to make these cookies, Google will show you how to do it. So here we go. We've got some different search results now, but Google has helped us. Uh, just make sure you always clear your search results before you do another search or else it'll start trying to figure out less than 30 minutes of movie times if you start looking up movies again. Or you can just go straight back to the Google homepage by clicking on this icon here. Alright, so we're back here. And then Google you can use to search for almost anything, such as Nicholas Sparks. I've already started typing it in, and here we've got Nicholas Sparks. Sometimes a handy little thing will come up here on the right side where the ads used to be. It'll give you a short bio of whoever it is you're looking up. So we've got Nicholas Sparks, uh, born, spouse, movies that have been made uh, from his works, things like that. And depending on what you search, you'll get different results. So these are just handy little things. There's tons of tabs to explore such as books and images and news. For instance, if you click on images, you get tons of images of Nicholas Sparks and it'll give you even more uh, search results related to in this manner. So I highly suggest you check out Google for yourself, try to figure out something you want to ask or want to find out, and that way you can learn as you go, basically. If you have any questions, uh, you can make sure you stop by the library or give the library a call and we'll always be willing to help you out. We love that people are wanting to learn new things. So, check it out, ask us if you need to, and have fun. Enjoy.